So this particular course is, is around communicating through social style agility. There's a lot of different style and personality and, and aptitude assessments in the market right now. There's Myers-Briggs, there's Two Colors, there's, there's Kobe, there's um, the PI, and you may have of these. We really landed on this one around social styles, and we really, we kind of taken it to the next step and morphed it and changed it a little bit over the years, but it, we love it because it's easy to understand and it's quick to apply. So if I can wait, I can describe this, is that what we're doing here in this particular assessment and the training that goes around it is for people to really understand what their style preference is. And it doesn't say that, it doesn't mean that you don't have many different abilities, but what do you prefer? What's that pair of jeans you just love to wear on a Saturday morning? What gives you energy? And so this is really all about being able to remove the chatter, the static between people. Google is now saying in their research that people are making a snap judgment about you or me in under a second. And that's part of the fact that we're in this attention deficit economy. We have the expectation that we will get an immediate response because Twitter and Facebook and our cell phones and all the other technology we have has been training us to expect that. But when it comes to interactions with people, we are also expecting to be able to make a very quick snap judgment about somebody. 97% of all communication is nonverbal. And so how you behave and how you act is either going to connect with people or it's not. And so social style agility in this particular training is really having you understand what it is your preference regarding how you like to communicate, what happens when you're stressed out, how you like to make decisions. So that's one outcome is that self-knowledge. The other thing is, even with other people not taking this particular assessment that we do in class, you will begin to be able to see and identify what the style is of other people. So, for example, as a tip, maybe you think about is who's the person that you normally have a really easy time connecting with? You guys just clicked first time, no problem. And my assessment is, in some ways, you probably have a style that's similar to each other because that other person reminds you of you and you love you, so you got to love them. If there's a connection, there's a, there's a familiarity, a familiarity of self and somebody else. Styles are lined up. Well, conversely, there may be a person in your life, I'm sure, that you have always had a hard time connecting with. You know, and so that's the maybe where their styles are somewhat different. And so the way I kind of describe this in class is that there's a difference between your content, which is the message, and the style by which it's being delivered. Joanne, my wife, wanted cowboy boots from Sundance this last Christmas. And so I went and got her these boots. They were beautiful. She loved them. I knew she would love them because she told me. So, so that, in a sense, is the, the analogy of the cowboy boots is the, the content in our communication. Now, if I had wrapped that, those boots in a box, you know, with some really ugly paper with a dilapidated bow, she probably would have looked at it and go, hmm, I don't know I like this. And that's the same way. The, the wrapping around the gift is our style. And so if your style does not align with somebody else, they will most likely not pay attention to you, especially in this fast-paced world of attention deficit. So this particular course is really about being able to develop ultimately the awareness of your style, the awareness of other people, and when appropriate, knowing how with strategy and practice in the class, how to change your style and change your approach, change your behavior so it's more like the other person. I'll tell you a quick story and then I want to hear some more comments and, and questions here. So my style, I mean, we can go through this and Melon, if you'd be so kind and, and uh, go to the next slide is that my style in the bottom right is expressive. I am a big picture, creative, fast-paced individual who has a need for recognition and approval, who is really good on socializing, and I'm not necessarily great when it checks details, and when my stress is high, I can kind of become a little bit protective of my self-esteem. That's my style. That's my preference. It's easy. It doesn't mean that I can't do the other styles. It just means it's easy. So when stress comes into my life, I kind of hang on that, and you all have your own style as well. So the story that I want to quickly tell you is many years ago when we were living in Seattle, I was doing a, um, a presentation for a group of law, no, accountants at Grant Thornton. And I walked into this room, big, you know, conference table and people are in button down three piece suits and, you know, the women were all professional and we all came together and I was in front of this, this uh, board and I had to have five minutes to pitch our little company 
on a sales training course that we wanted them to buy. Well, meanwhile, out in the lobby, there's three or four other companies waiting their turn to do the same thing. So I'm sitting there and I'm standing there and I'm starting to do my presentation. And because I am who I am, my style is expressive. My style is big picture. I am moving around. I'm using my hands. I'm using inflection in my voice. I'm telling stories. I'm trying to be funny. I'm doing the things that make it easy for me. And I notice that the audience is actually not paying attention. They start looking at their watch. They start looking away. They're looking bored. And I go, oh, my gosh, I'm losing them. This is a tough crowd. So then I thought, well, if a little bit of my energy is not working, maybe a lot of my energy will make it work. So I end up cranking up the volume, cranking up the energy, cranking up my, my style. And they only went more and more reserved. And then I got to the presentation that was about teaching them around social style agility. And I realized that I was doing the exact thing I was going to teach them not to do. I was applying a style that was not reflective of the style in the room, which was much more, if you think of this page on the on your computer, much more analytical. It's more about facts and information and details and, and history and accuracy and, and a kind of a nonverbal communication that was more subdued. Once I realized that, I slowed everything down. I stopped walking around so fast, stopped telling those dumb corny jokes, stopped using my hands to gesture. I went to the flip chart. And I pulled out a pen and I started writing figures. And the figures represented cost savings in a company that we were able to help and the money back guarantee and the rate of sales that went up as a result of this program for this company. And once I started talking in the language that they were familiar, they then started to pay attention and they asked questions. And although I was uncomfortable, I was able to communicate with them and they were able to hear. So our styles were meshing. We got the gig. It was of 20 minutes of me sweating, but who cares? We got the gig. It was a nice you know, book of business for a while there. So communication style agility. We do this a lot. We've done it hundreds of times. This is a very popular program. I was just in Cincinnati, and I did this for a group. Um, I was up and worked with a lawyer group. We've done this with large groups, small groups in different countries. It's a very, very powerful process that takes people through to be able to have some self-discovery, understand how they can actually create better communication with people specifically with different styles on their own so we have more tolerance we have more engagement with people and so um, very popular course and um, you'll love it it's a lot of fun and very very much about you know walking away with those tools and, and you'll be able to apply them that very day so questions what have we got so far Melanie that's showing up on your board yeah, so uh, one came in about a delicate, can you talk about the delicate balance between employees and supervisors and um, kind of maybe relating to social social style? Was that the question regarding social style? Mm hmm Okay, got it. Well, I don't know the whole context of the person's question, so I'll just take a stab at this. Um, so the, the kind of front loading was um, maybe treating them as human beings, not robots. Um, no. <laughs> So is that the the supervisor treating the employee as, as human beings that robot? <laughs> well, I think yes. if I'm the if I'm the if I'm the supervisor, um, uh, obviously, you know, my success is going to be totally incumbent on the success of the people that I work with and the people that I lead. And so, if I am, if we're just taking the the pathway around social styles, my job hopefully would be is to understand what the style preferences they are of each of my particular team members and be able to communicate to them accordingly. I got one person who's all about being a driver, wants results, is uh, likes control. I'm not gonna come into my employee's office and sit around and talk about the cats and dogs, the kids and the fish. I'm gonna come in there and say, the next thing that we're gonna do, here's the game plan, in and out, and it's gonna be a lot more direct, but that works for that particular employee. Another employee might want to socialize more. The amiable is on the bottom left-hand side. It's all about relationship security. So I go into that person's office and say, so how are the kids? What did you do over the weekend? Let's, talk, let's see those grandkids. And then we have conversations and we ease into work through relationships versus start right off. And so I think that uh, that's how I would say if you're the supervisor is you really do definitely need to understand that one size does not fit all. 
uh, you have to be agile. You have to be flexible if you're going to be able to, to engage people the most because engagement is really part of the outcome here is that when we have engaged employees, engaged leaders, then we increase our learning. And I, was, I read a quote recently, maybe I've already mentioned this on this call, but if the speed of learning is not faster than the speed of change, you're going to fall behind. Whether that's an employee who's brand new to a company, a student, whether it's a, a, a somebody who owns their own small business or works for a large business, the speed of change is so fast right now that we have to get really good at learning as fast as that change. Style diversity, style flexibility, creating that tolerance and understanding the differences is what makes us stronger, not makes us more divisive, is where we want to go. And that increases that engagement, which ultimately increases better learning. And better learning actually has, for those people who are about that, creates better productivity, bottom line results, and real value for even shareholders and the like. It all connects. Great question. Yeah, great question. So another one came in about when leaders fail, what's usually the biggest cause? Lack of self-awareness. That's the biggest one. Um, if you don't know thyself, then how can you possibly change it? And by the time a leader fails, it's usually because they've had several opportunities to pay attention to some issues that have come up and they haven't stepped back and done a, an, aware, an assessment around, you know, what can I learn here? So. I think the, the biggest failure, one of them, there's certainly many of them we could talk about, but really a big one is I just am not paying attention. I'm not paying attention to myself. I'm not paying attention to what I do and how it affects other people. I'm not reading the cues, and some of those cues are very subtle. I'm not reading the tea leaves, so to speak. I'm not paying attention to the outside world and how it's affecting us. I think it all comes down to, in the, in the end, it comes down to do I have self-awareness? Conversely, can I take that self-awareness and translate that into learning and ultimately into action? Um, that's what I, uh, what I see. Excellent. You want to talk a little bit about the three-day session or the, the, I mean, I know you talked about the, the content, but maybe the format, Dean? Well, I, yeah, the, I mean, the, as you said, Melanie, very, very happily that these are a la carte classes, but you could also take them as a series. And the nice thing is that they all worked well together. Um, you know, so for example, coaching skills that you're going to be learning is going to really be enhanced by understanding under other people's social style preferences. Um, you're a far better coach if you actually know yourself and you have an authentic leadership brand that clearly states who you are. So these things really work in tandem with each other, but obviously not everybody can take all three. So they, but, so they are set up as individual courses, but they can work very well together. Um, and it's all really about, you know, my ability, your ability to, to become better learners, to become better at self-awareness, to be able to be more impactful with the people that we are working with and leading, whether that be a student, whether that be a teacher, whether that be a small business owner or somebody working for somebody else. Um, I think if you come with an open mind, you come with having some fun, because we're going to have some fun. If you can come with the understanding that your self-awareness is going to be what starts you down this path whether it's one day, two days, or three days, and that you are willing to take some action as a result of it. And that's what we're going to be focused on. By the time you walk out of that, we will have clear, specific action items. We'll have workbooks that give you the tools that you can refer back to. We'll have places for you to be able to record your ideas. All of that stuff is very, very inclusive, so that when you walk out of there, you have a game plan for either one of those courses or all three of them. Who should be in the program? Uh, we've identified managers, maybe uh, people that are interested in becoming managers, supervisors or coordinators or people leading the team, um, those that are interested in developing those leadership skills. So if you're not yet a leader, um, it's, it's the perfect time to hone before you're actually, you know, the emergency leader and leading the team. Um, and so understanding your, your authentic style and, um, and your leadership style pre-leadership pre is, is the key. So do you have any other identified audiences, Dean, that you could see could benefit? No, I think you're right. And I think that sometimes people, when, I, when they take a course from us or they work for the company, they say, you know, uh, Dean, I don't really have any direct reports. How can I take your course without that? And it, I don't think that's a problem at all. Um, we work with small companies. We work with some of them as big as ExxonMobil, and we have that question come up. This is really 
also about life skills. And you can translate that in many, many ways. We were not focusing on how you become a better parent, but I think that's one of the things that happens sometimes, or how you better become a better friend or a partner. These things are transferable. The other thing I would say is in terms of leadership is that, yes, maybe you're not a leader today. Maybe you don't have the title of leader. You don't have the uh, individual contributors who are coming up to you and saying, you're my boss. Maybe that's the case. But maybe at one point you will. You know, And um, there is so much evidence right now that says that if you behave and you act as a leader, you will be seen as a leader. And it's not thing that you need to wait to be tapped on the shoulder. Start behaving that way, start thinking that way, start having that strategic vision, start getting really good at, at what's your point of view around leadership, your leadership brand, your communication style, your coaching. Get really good at that. And so that when it's time to look for a new person to uh, promote, you will stick out because you're already acting like a leader. And so um, I just wanted to accentuate that because sometimes people feel like they're not ready for this. I think we, could, we, we, we do do that. We have people who are, uh, come through these courses who are, you know, have no direct reports, and we also have people who have headed up um, you know, large companies and they have leaders under them and leaders under them, um, very much so. Last thing I'll say is that we do have a pretty clear curriculum and agenda I am very much of the, of the mindset that if there's a particular topic that is really taking root in our conversation, in our exercises, and we need to spend more time with that and less time with something else, then that's what we do. It is, I, don't, I am not um, uh, really um, formalized in saying we have to finish this conversation exactly now. I want to go with the, I want to go where the, the insight is, where the discovery is, and that's going to come from people like you. And we'll, we'll follow your lead based on the energy in the room. So uh, we had another question about um, employee engagement. So how do you jumpstart employee engagement in order to keep them engaged? How do you jumpstart employee engagement in order to keep them, them being the employee, engaged? Okay, so I guess what I'm trying to get out of that is it sounds like how do we, how do we engage employees? <laughs> if, I, if I can sort of um, decipher what that question is. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm a leader and I want to engage my employee, I would want to find out um, a, f a few things. Um, one, I got to develop a relationship with these people. I want to know uh, what makes them tick. I want to know what their social style is. That would be one thing. I want to understand uh, a little bit about their background, their, their personal life. But ultimately, I want to know what are their goals, what turns them on, uh, what is it that really uh, provides value to them? And then once I have some understanding about what that is, then let's find ways to be able to um, bring more opportunities so they can fulfill on that. There's a great book, another tip if you guys want. It's called Drive by Daniel Pink. He did a lot of research on research of motivation, which is another way of saying engagement. And he discovered research that people are engaged or motivated not by the typical carrot and stick approach let's reward you or punish you but more by three things uh, autonomy mastery and purpose and that is those three things that he felt and I think he's got something here around what really can motivate and ultimately engage people so in the end it is about aligning the individual to things that they are passionate about removing the barriers to those particular activities, and really be a champion for that individual. If they don't know what really turns them on, then at least by developing the relationship and the process and meeting on occasion to ask those questions shows tremendous interest. Um, another tip and tool is check out the Gallup Q12 um, assessment that came out several years ago. The 12 of the, seven of the 12 questions, by the way, around what engages employees based on a 7,800 uh, member survey, I think it's that number, don't quote me on that one, had to do with relationships at work, like I have a best friend at work, I have somebody who really cares about me and so forth. So engagement ultimately is a relationship function and aligning the individual to their passion. And if you can help people do that, that'll help them become more engaged. Thank you again for your time. Thank you everybody for attending and thanks Dean. Thank you so much. I appreciate everyone's time. Um, 
If you want to check out our website, that's the one way you can also ask a question of me. The site will be updated here pretty soon, but nonetheless, I just want to make sure that myself and I know Melanie, you as well are making yourself available for any questions and comments. So I'd uh, love to keep the conversation going.